Alhamdulillahi allazi yanzal alkitaba tibiyanan li kulli shay'in wa hudan lil muttaqin wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allahul malikul haqqul mubin wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu wa ba'd Across the lengths and breadth of the earth and all the way around under the heavens there is no place on this planet as spiritually respected or inspiringly revered to as Makkah with the onset of Hajj season every year The spirit of true believers across the globe blooms with flashing speed to commence their journey to the ancient house. From the very moment those faithful servants touch base with the city of perpetual blessings, they are thrilled by the very thought that they are in the holiest place on earth. The inviolability of this blessed city is of such that the one who created all things swears by it. Of course, Swearing by something is obviously indicative of its importance and virtues. Allah may he be glorified and exalted has consecrated Makkah a sanctuary on the day he created the heavens and the earth. And due to the quality of being sacred and deserving respect, it debars non-Muslims from entering. That's solely because of the connection the city has with the sublime master. the worthiness of it in terms of every religious ritual and every worldly affairs qul allah azza wa jal ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu inma al mushrikuna najasun fala yaqrabu al masjid al haram ba'da amihim hadha o you who believe indeed the mushrikeen are unclean so let them not enter the holy masjid after this that is after their final year Abu Hurairah radiyallahu anhu reported that in the year prior to the last Hajj of the Prophet when Allah's messenger made Abu Bakr the leader of the pilgrims Abu Bakr sent me in the company of a group of people to make a public announcement Ala la yahujju ba'd al-'am mushrikun wa la yatufu bil bayti 'uryan No pagan is allowed to observe Hajj after this year and no naked person is allowed to observe tawaf of the Kaaba Testifying to the ascendancy of the honorable city the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam declares in hadha al balad haramahu allah yawma khalaqa as samawati wal ard fa huwa haramun bi hurmati allah ila yawm al qiyamah Allah has made the city a sanctuary the day he created the heavens and the earth therefore it is a sanctuary until the day of resurrection In one hadith the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam sadly said wallahi innaki la khayrun ardillah wa ahabbu ardillahi ila allah walaw anni ukhrijtu minka ma kharajtu by allah you are the best land of allah the most beloved land of allah to allah had i not been driven out of you i would not have left you Once an ancient dusty desert tongue and where tensions were constantly on the rise between the Muslims and the pagans who prevented the believers to worship Allah peacefully Makkah remains a historical city and the cultural capital of the Islamic world as it transcends all national boundaries languages and colors so to merely having the honor to touch base with this most blessed land is a blessing beyond overload Muslims in every nook and cranny are irresistibly drawn to this most glorious city with full enthusiasm throughout the year especially during the seasons of Ramadan and Hajj there is no true muslim who visits Mecca and does not feel himself or herself being called at all times by an overwhelming desire to visit again this being the case then just imagine being driven by a craving desire to even live in the blessed city and attract more attention to its symbolic significance and overall spiritual and civilizational legacy while getting closer to Allah in worship and glorification the quran says zalika wa may yu'azzim sha'ira Allah fa innaha min taqwa al-qulub and whoever honors the symbols the rights of Allah indeed it is from the piety of hearts as it is an unquestionably indisputable fact that Mecca is the most venerated and celebrated place every inch of it this unrival city in the world is regarded as a safe resort and refuge for those who enter it the quran resounds with words that assure happiness to the inhabitants of the blissful city which at all times provides fine and fulfilling lives the quran says wa is qala ibrahim rabbi ja'al hadha baladan amina وَرَزُقْ أَهْلَهُ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ مَنْ آمَنَ مِنْهُمْ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ 
And when Ibrahim said, My Lord, make this a secure city and provide its people with fruits, whoever of them believes in Allah and the last day. Allah the Exalted promises, وَمَنْ دَخَلَهُ كَانَ آمِنًا Whoever enters it, he attains security. To the grandeur that Allah then did Mecca with and his love for it and in an atmosphere of wonder lies in the center of the Grand Mosque, the small cube-shaped building shrouded in the hallmark black kiswa decorated with Quranic texts and richly interwoven with silk and gold threads. This most significant house is called Al-Baytul Atiqa, the emancipated and ancient house, commonly known as the Kaaba. This structure is revered by Muslims as an Islamic relic which dates back to the time of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. Some even say Prophet Adam alayhi salam and this was the view of Ibn al-Jawzi and Ibn Hajar. However, from a legal point of view and according to the most authentic available source evidence such as Ibn Kathir, the strongest opinion is that Kaaba was first built by Prophet Ibrahim and his son Ismail alayhi salam. Those who also converged on this position were Ibn Taymiyyah and Ibn Al-Qayyim. The wide and unroofed area designated for the Kaaba is the focal point of the earth and directly above it is Al-Baytul Ma'mur, the frequented house which is situated in heaven and the Kaaba on earth is a replica of it. The angels in heaven make tawaf around this majestic house just as we make tawaf around the Kaaba. Every single day a fresh batch of 70,000 angels visit and observe prayers in it. The Messenger of Allah wonderfully relates about his journey of Isra wal Mi'raj and he said, Summa rufi ali al baytul ma'mur, fakul tu ya jibril ma hadha, kala, hadha al baytul ma'mur, yar huluhu kulla yomin sabuna alfa malak, ida kharaju min hulam ya udu fihi akruma alayhim. The Prophet said, The baytul ma'mur was raised up to me. I said, O oh, Jibril, what is this? He replied, it is the Baytul Ma'mur, 70,000 angels enter it daily and after they come out they never return again, meaning always a fresh batch comes into it daily and this will continue forever. While droves of men, women and children throng the symbolic house 24 hours a day, circumambulating it and praying in any direction they want and facing it, over a billion people turn precisely to its direction five times a day every day in prayer. This amply shows that though this humble structure does not rival modern building in size and in beauty in accordance with the highest global standards, its impact on history and human is unparalleled. Other than being the center of pilgrimage and a true melting pot of Muslims worldwide, this ancient house shoe represents a conventional emblem that connects all Muslims together away from fantasy and materialistic aim wherever they may be. And whether rich or poor, powerful or feeble, every Muslim in the world has to face it in prayer. It is a symbol of unity in the Muslim nation and a consolidation of true Islamic values that add to the beauty of the religion in a practical manner and in a realistic way that is easy to comprehend in astonishment. Allah has instructed, وَمِنْ حَيْثُ كَرَجْتَ فَوَلِّ وَجْهَكَ شَطْرَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ وَحَيْثُ مَا كُنْتُمْ فَوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ شَطْرَهُ Wherever you are, O Prophet, turn your face towards the sacred mosque, and wherever you believers are, face towards it. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَ أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ